everybody. Welcome to Thursday's stream. You know, sometimes you wonder what we're going to discuss and then boom, something that will take up uh, most of our stream. And that's the Fantastic Four latest news. Uh, and I've told you before uh, that the scooping game is a thankless game uh, because I reported on Vanessa Kirby way before anybody else. Uh, and then I was able to report way before anybody else that she was back in it and had likely signed. Uh, but, you know, nobody ever remembers uh, in the scoop game, which is uh, a, a very frustrating aspect of it, but one that you just have to accept because that's in the, that, that is the scoop game. Uh, you can get the receipts. You can check. I called it June 13th that she got the role. And I had predicted, I had, I had reported even before that that she was a front runner. Oh, I got so frustrated, I forgot to include some photos. Hold on one second. Mm, so annoying about that. Okay. Let me add these two photos. So it's very nice to see everybody today. All right, there we go. All right. Oh, a little too early. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to fill you in on exactly what's going on. Uh, I, Because as soon as I saw these new details, well, I was a little upset about the Vanessa Kirby being confirmed. Uh, by, you know, and, you know, I was like, I already confirmed that. Thank you, Michael. Um, but then uh, I went and I checked on all this other news. And I was like, okay, let me tell you what's going on. And I found out a lot of other information. So I'll set the record straight about what's really happening. And I did just tweet about Reed Richards because I wanted to get that information out there while I could. Uh, all right, so, but I'm gonna cover it all here. All right, so we'll start out talking about Sue Storm, okay? Uh, thanks, Art. Uh, okay, so hold on. Uh, th th so really the Fantastic Four is the first two stories of the day. All right, and so by the way, for those of you who don't recall the way this works, uh, we just jumped right in it today. Uh, the way this works is that uh, please keep your comments and uh, questions to the topic at hand. Uh, if I haven't actually opened up the subject to questions, I might not be able to get to yours. Um, and then at the very end of this the live stream, there will be a Q&A where you can ask me about anything. It doesn't have to pertain to any of the stories of the day. All right, so let's start out. Story number one. Boop. Oh, there she is, Vanessa Kirby. So uh, as I, so let me, let me uh, reiterate the, the journey of Vanessa Kirby with this role. So I had found out that Vanessa Kirby was one of the finalists uh, very early on, way before June 13th. It was, this was a great source that fell into my lap. I couldn't believe it, and I was able to break that story. Uh, and there were a couple of other people in, the content, in contention, like, you know, um, uh, for instance, Allison Williams was one of the people, as I reported. And then, you know, a couple of other scoopers got, on the, got the short list right as well. However, we were all very surprised when Margot Robbie swept in there and suddenly seemed like she was going to be Harley Quinn, Barbie, and Sue Storm. And I, like, like a couple of other people, were like, that's too much. You know, Sue Storm needs to be Sue Storm. But thankfully, Margot Robbie wanted too much money. And so Marvel had to say, you know, to, had to move on. And that's how Vanessa Kirby, who had always been Matt Shankman's first choice, because uh, I really trust my source on this. My source on this is top notch. Um, that's a great picture of Vanessa Kirby, by the way. I mean, she looks phenomenal there. I wanted to get a picture that did her justice. She doesn't have the greatest stylist, a little bit like Margot Robbie. Uh, I'm a big Vanessa Kirby fan, and I thought that picture was amazing. I was like, oh, that sells it, boy. That is a great photo. So I heard that she got signed around June 13th. Uh, you know, I didn't, I don't, you know, you don't want to get in trouble. So I was like, I heard she signed, but I was 99% sure that uh, Vanessa Kirby had signed uh, around June 13th for this role. Now that was before the actor's strike. And you know, you might recall that she was asked about this because of my, my tweets, you know, and then that had been picked up and had become a big story. And so when she was interviewed for Dead Reckoning, someone said, uh, there's a rumor that you're going to be Sue Storm. And Vanessa Kirby just very nicely said, I, it would be an honor to play such a role. And so you're like, oh, that's very coy. So I believe when she did that interview, and as you're seeing more confirmation today from other scoopers, she's already signed. But she's the only person who has been signed. Just to make that clear, 
Nobody else has been signed. Now, I didn't break this aspect of the story, but I did confirm today that it's true, that Sue Storm is the lead of the movie. I'm a little nervous about that. I'm a little nervous that the character who also turns invisible is the lead. Sue Storm, uh, we'll talk about the other people who are on the Marvel shortlist, but nobody else has been signed. No other role is cast. The only actor, actor who is definitely in the Marvel's Fantastic Four is Vanessa Kirby, okay? Um, so that, that's just the, and also no one can sign for a while because of the strike. So I guess that's why also they cast her first because if she's the lead, you need to build the rest of the cast around her because she's gonna be the anchor of the film. You know, all in the game, The Incredibles 2 is an excellent comparison. Uh, I love, uh, you know, Elastigirl. I think she's fantastic. So let's get to the rest of the cast. Now, I don't know if you guys follow Neb's Good Takes, but he, a uh, very funny uh, 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 Twitter person on Twitter, uh, he's gaining more and more followers and becoming an influencer in his own right. Uh, and uh, I know his husband, Croc, as well. Sometimes they're on this stream. They've been doing a little Blue Beetle exciting stuff lately. And they were very kind to include me on their uh, Fantastic Four casting uh, sheet, which I thought was very funny. But it's kind of a good thing for us to be able to look at this and uh, use it a little bit as to what the rumors are and for me to settle them. But uh, yes, as I tweeted, love you, Neb. Uh, and that was very sweet of Neb to do that. Yeah, I, I, Gareth, thank you for gifting 10 memberships. Yeah, that photo is one that I took when I uh, was in Los Angeles and I got my makeup professionally done. And I, I was having perhaps a little bit too much fun taking selfies. Um, uh, and I had actually deleted that photo, uh, but people, yoink, snapped it up before I had deleted it. But um, I thought that was very nice of Neb to do that. Uh, and so anyway, yeah, you can see uh, Vanessa Kirby there, and, and Vanessa Kirby, again, is the only one who is definitely confirmed. All right, so let's get started. Let's make this a little smaller. It's covering up, it's covering up uh, me in live action here. All right, so hold on, there's, my, there's the arrow. So let's start actually with Johnny Storm, because that was the other name that's getting a lot of attention, okay? And the name that was mentioned was Joseph Quinn, who played Eddie from Stranger Things uh, 4. And he had fake hair. You know, he had, that was a wig, but it was a fantastic wig. And that's what he looks like uh, in real life, that picture of him right there. Uh, I heard that he was the first choice now. He is the first choice, uh, which is interesting because he looks an awful lot like Paul Meskel. I mean, Matt Shankman must really like this idea for casting. By the way, how do I feel about this? I don't feel great about it, to be honest with you. I don't feel great about Joseph Quinn. I thought he was incredible in Stranger Things. I think he looks, though, a little bit too much like Robert Downey Jr. to the point of distracting. Uh, you know, you're going to be like, wow, Johnny Storm looks an awful lot like uh, uh, Tony Stark. Uh, but then also my other problem is, is that Johnny Storm is a mimbo. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the term mimbo, that is a male bimbo. <laughs> it's a great term. Uh, you know, I'm not saying he maybe can't get there, but he's not a mimbo. Uh, as Wade just pointed out, Chris Evans was, you know, Johnny Storm. He was a great Johnny Storm. Uh, oh, a himbo. That's right. You guys like himbo, I think, is the current term, right? I've always used mimbo, but I believe himbo is what people are going with these days. Okay, he's a himbo. Uh, I mean, that's what Johnny Storm is. Joseph Quinn is not a himbo. So I always like the casting of someone like uh, Zac Efron. And as Ben Ten just pointed out, Austin Butler had really wanted this role. Um, and I guess, you know, I think he would be available at this point. I would prefer Austin Butler. I think Austin Butler would be a phenomenal, phenomenal Johnny Storm. I actually really would like that casting. Uh, but I just think that Joseph Quinn is like, not a good choice, quite frankly. You know, that's, that's how I feel. Uh, I think he's not good. And then the other problem is, is that he doesn't, I don't think, I think he looks a lot like Tom Holland as well. I'm afraid, like, that's the thing. Like if Austin Butler stood next to uh, Tom Holland, that would have the perfect Johnny Storm, Peter Parker vibes. You know, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, but you know, Joseph Quinn looks like Tom Holland's older brother or something, or just his like brother. It's just weird. And I agree, Evan, he doesn't really look that much like Vanessa Kirby's brother. And Austin Butler actually kind of looks a little bit like Vanessa Kirby. Why isn't it Austin Butler? 
it so clearly should be Austin Butler. That's what's so exciting about the Vanessa Kirby casting. She's someone who's really, well, well, let me bring those photos in that I had wanted to do. So let's talk about her for just a second. Let's go back there. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, you might be like, who is this lady? Well, she, of course, has famously been in the last two Mission Impossible movies with Tom Cruise. Uh, and she wore all white. So that's why everybody was saying she should be Emma Frost, because people saw her in all white and she's blonde. And they were like, oh, there we go. All right. But then, of course, she was also in The Crown, which is why Matt Smith is a weird choice. Uh, because he also, of course, was in her seasons of The Crown. There she is uh, with, um, boy, who was the actress who played the queen again? Boy, her career sure just totally went down the drain. I forgot her name already. She was in the Girl at the Dragon Tattoo remake, and it was really bad. Claire Foy. Thank you, everybody. Claire Foy. Woo, her career went down the, down the drain. Uh, that's why, that just goes to show you never know. Remember what happened to Key and Peel? You know, we thought, ah, oh, Key has defeated Peel, and then Peel came out of nowhere, and now he's the dominant one. So it's crazy, but Vanessa Kirby played Princess Margaret as a brunette, and she was incredible. She's also in the upcoming Napoleon, Napoleon movie. That's right, Visionary. But if you want to know how good Vanessa Kirby is, watch the first season of The Crown. You're not going to understand it from her Mission Impossible performance. She's really, really good on The Crown. Uh, all right, so anyway. That's who she is. Ah, oh, Lawson, thank you for gifting 10 memberships. That's very generous of you. Uh, Claire Foy was in Woman Talking, Derek, but nobody talked about that. Nobody watched that. All right, hold on one second. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Arminifer, Vanessa Kirby, and Navy MT. Vanessa Kirby was in Hobbs and Shaw, but she needs better hair. Her hair didn't look good enough in that movie, and I'm telling you, to be Sue Storm, she needs to have great hair, which is why I love this photo of her right here. She has great hair. Uh, I'll watch this Warner Brothers called dibs on Butler. Uh, I hope not. Austin Butler, maybe he does have studio, uh, studio loyalty, but he should be Johnny Storm. All right, next up, let's talk, let's talk a little Reed Richards, okay? So there's Reed Richards, and I tweeted this because I wanted to get it out there. Um, Reed Richards, this is who I heard today was the shortlist, and I really only posted this for Dev Patel. Because I thought that was, I was surprised to hear that, and I thought that was very exciting. So, yeah, Matt Smith is still in the running, you know. Uh, I think he's too obvious a choice. He's already on House of the Dragon. Uh, he was already on The Crown with Vanessa Kirby. I I'm not a big fan of Matt Smith for the role. Uh, also, I'm a little nervous after he was in Morbius. I'm a little scared. Adam Driver, he did turn the role down. He's turned it down several times. But Marvel, I heard, is not giving up. When the, when the writer's strike, when the actor's strike is over, they're going to go back. Maybe with more money. Maybe with offering them a rewrite. Who knows? I still, if, you know, if Adam Driver got it, I would be happy, to be honest with you. I really like Adam Driver. I do agree that he's an excellent match with Vanessa Kirby. However, I do like Dev Patel. I think Dev Patel is a very interesting choice. I do agree that Dev Patel would probably have to put up with some haters. But I think he is a really cool choice, and I think that he would be, um, you know, it would be interesting. That's right, Ben 10. But my other choice, like everybody else, is Glenn Howerton. Why isn't he in the running? First, I thought maybe he was too short. But I looked it up. He's three inches taller than Vanessa Kirby. Vanessa Kirby is apparently 5'7", uh, which means she's an inch taller than me, which means she's pretty tiny. So how small is Tom Cruise, by the way? Uh, and then Glenn Howerton is 5'10". Now everybody fudges a little bit, I'm sure, on their height. But he's, their lies still make him taller. So Glenn Howerton really is the best choice of anyone, to be honest with you. And if you'd seen Blackberry, you would understand. You know, uh, Sierra, I like Penn Badgley, but I think he's too small, uh, even just in stature you know, to be a, a opposite Vanessa Kirby. I think he would, you know, he'd have to be stretching all the time. So Penn Badgley, he's like a little bit, uh, Kevin Plopper, I'm not short. I'm 5'6". I feel I'm tall. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not that tall. I'm 5'6". Uh, so anyway, uh, I appreciate that, Zach. I'm glad I, I'm glad I look taller than I am. But I'm, I'm actually apparently shorter than Tom Cruise. But, I, you know, let's see. I think he's lying. Uh, all right, so anyway, Glenn Howerton, I think, should 1,000%. I don't understand why this isn't happening. Uh, Blatino Boy says, Dev Patel would be a nice spin on the character of Reed Richards. He could also potentially up the diversity of the audience. I agree. You know, I mean, they have another, that other actor here from um, on this list 
who is from, uh, I, I forgot to write his name down. It's, it's escaping me. He's on um, all the Matt, no, Mike Flanagan stuff. He's really great. Uh, I love him. Um, but um, he was on iZombie. Rahul Kaholi, thank you. Uh, on Mike Flanagan, that's right. I do like him, but I think Dev Patel is a little bit of a better choice between the two of them. Uh, I like Dev Patel. Don't forget that Reed Richards is an anti-hero and sometimes a straight-up villain. So the actor has to have that quality. It'd be charismatic that everybody still, the fans still like him. So I think it should clearly be Glenn Howerton. I think that, I, I like... I like Glenn Howerton, Dev Patel, and Adam Driver. I'm very against Matt Smith. I think it's too obvious. And, um, all right, we'll do a Reed Richards poll. All right, hold on. Start a poll. Reed Richards. Who is your vote for Reed Richards? We have just enough with four names. Matt Smith. Adam Driver. Dev Patel. And then... Glenn Howerton. Glenn Howerton's agent sucks that he's not gotten him into this conversation. I'd be like, Kevin Feige, have you seen Blackberry? That is a bald cap, thank you very much. That is not what Glenn Howerton actually looks like. Look, he has a very bushy head of hair, quite frankly. Thank you very much. I, I don't know why his agent isn't working on this better. I mean, it's ridiculous. Although, look, Dev Patel's winning our poll so far. Oh, that's exciting. All right, so while you guys vote on this, I'm going to tell you about Ebon Moss Bar Barrick, who was, whose name was bandied about today. And you can see that Neb guessed, hold on, let me get rid of the Glenn uh, in the Reed stuff. So Neb had, I think, you know, obviously guessed uh, the thing, which is a fair guess because Ebon Moss Barrick is uh, Jewish, and the thing, of course, is a Jewish character. However, I heard that Ebon Moss Barrick was uh, now, you know, Oh, it's pronounced Evan? Thank you. So Evan, Evan Moss Barrick. Uh, I heard that he was actually being considered for the Galactus Herald, which I think is a total waste of him. Not even Galactus. The Herald of Galactus, who comes in and says Galactus is coming. Not Silver Surfer, by the way, I heard, but somebody else. Uh, I think, you know, I think that seems dumb. And if I were uh, Evan... I would pass on that. I just don't think it's appropriate for him. Although I like that Kevin Feige obviously watches the bear because, you know, he just cast uh, AO, the lead. He is casting a ton of people from that show. Uh, and so that's very exciting. But uh, apparently he does, didn't watch Blackberry. Uh, uh, Evan was also in The Punisher, where he was quite good. If you have not seen the bear, it will turn you into a huge Evan Moss uh, uh, Backrack fan. He's incredible. So we'll see what they decide to do. Uh, so let's see what your, uh, what your poll is. Hold on, let's end it, hold on. I'm gonna end the poll, and then I shall answer your questions before we move on to the next story. All right, so Dev Patel, 36%. Oh, look at how many people voted for Adam Driver. That's gonna warm Kevin Feige's heart, because that's, that's who Kevin Feige obviously really wants, with 31%. Uh, Glenn Howerton with 22 and nobody wants Matt Smith, way down there at 10%. Uh, but that's great. That's very exciting. I think that um, I'll be very curious to see who they decide to go with. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Uh, are, does anybody have any questions about this or comments? Uh, Twice as Bright says, I'd love to see David Diggs as the thing. Awesome actor, and he's also Jewish. You know, I kind of agree. You would like to get some diversity in this group. Um, I do feel, however, that I don't really know if the black community is going to be happy with having to continually get these characters that don't appear in their own skin. You know, either they're painted a different color or they're doing motion capture. And, you know, the thing is never goes back to his human form, except like occasionally, like almost never. You know, so I don't know if that would be great. Steven Turner says, I think someone like Glenn Powell should be Johnny. Oh, he'd be a good Johnny. He's a little, I don't know if he might be a little bit too old for that at this point, but he would be a great Johnny as well. Sean Turner said, I'd love the nephew, the quote unquote nephew from the White Lotus season two to be Johnny. He'd be an interesting choice, but I, I think, I don't know. I don't think Johnny, I always thought of Johnny having more modelly looks and that guy was a little bit beefier in my opinion. I mean, it's Austin Butler. 
I mean, I mean, anybody else, you just look at them and be like, they're not Austin Butler. David Kyle says, is a big Sioux fan, I would prefer Carrie Mulligan, Kelly Cuoco, or Zam Zombieland. That's very sweet. That's very nice of you to say, David. Um, I really like Vanessa Kirby. And honestly, I feel like the same way about her, about Joe Locke. If you're not into the casting, you just don't know the actor well enough. I, I mean, I feel that good about it. Welm says, Henry Cavill for Doctor Doom. He's got the face, height, and the attitude. I, you know, as difficult as Henry Cavill is, I still feel he, that fans like him. And I think when he's used correctly, he's very potent. Uh, but I don't know if he'd want to have his face covered all the time. Let's see here. Chris Isley says, do actors and actresses even still want to be part of the MCU? You know, Chris, I think that's an interesting question. And I think that's why they're probably getting a little bit more picky about the money. I think that it's not the career defining moment that it used to be. And I think it's now a double edged sword and it's a more of a roll of the dice, even with the MCU, where you don't really know how you're going to be perceived and how the project is going to be perceived. So I think now you're seeing talent say, you got to make this worth my money. I mean, worth, worth my, worth my time money wise. And so that's why you have especially established talent saying, show me the money. Vanessa Kirby just wants to work. Vanessa Kirby has been waiting. You know when the, the she, look how long it's been since she's been on the crown. Claire Foy was able to have a, a rise in her career and a fall. And, you know, Vanessa Kirby still never really went anywhere. Uh, but good for her for not giving up. And now she's finally going to have her big break, which is great. I love, you know, Margot Robbie did an amazing job with Barbie. She totally turned her career around. She cemented herself as the star that Hollywood had been presenting her, her as. But she can't be in everything. She can't also be in Pirates of the Caribbean. It's, for, it's ridiculous. It's too much. Uh, Max says, Adam Driver ain't dumb. That's right. Adam Driver wants to get paid. Also, he already went through all this with Star Wars. And I have to say, nobody dislikes him in Star Wars. He's the shining, like the one thing that everybody got together and was like, he was great in Star Wars. His Kylo Ren was hilarious. I loved it. Okay, I'm going to move on in just a moment before anybody, let's see here. Oh, Generation Marvel says, my pick for Johnny Storm is Dave Franco. I'm sorry to say Generation Marvel, and you know, if it wasn't for what happened with um, James Franco, I think he'd be a great choice and a very good match with uh, Tom Holland. But that, that James Franco thing affected the whole family, I'm sorry to say. Fran and it even got Alice, uh, Allison Brie, who, who's married to Dave Franco. Uh, Fran likes Pepsi. So do you think it's possible for the movie to place Vanessa as the lead and have it be very much an ensemble at the same time? Yeah, but I think it's going to be from her perspective. You know, it's, I heard it's going to be like in the 1960s and then they find themselves out of time. It's a little bit like Captain America, which I have mixed feelings about. You know, they're going to be out of time as well. Although while Captain America comes from 1940s America, they come from 1960s America. So I don't know how I feel about that, quite frankly, but, you know, whatever. Uh, Nova Star says, I think Henry Cavill would be like Jonathan Hickman. Uh, Dr. Montgomery would be good as the... What do you mean like Jonathan Hickman? Make sure you make sure your question is very well worded so that I know what you're talking about because I feel bad if I can't answer it. Leroy says, I heard Driver wasn't impressed with the script. How much input do the actors get in the scripts at Marvel? Uh, well, they don't really get any input, but they can kind of get input by saying, I pass on your movie. <laughs> and then maybe they'll do a rewrite where he's like, this is crap. And then they go, uh, hold on, quick to the rewrite room. Uh, so I also, I would suspect Adam Driver wants to get paid more, but that's not a very sympathetic reason to turn it down. You know, Adam Driver was like, still not enough money, put another zero on that. Uh, but instead he goes, I think the script is weak. And then they go, okay, what if I put another zero on your check? And he goes, suddenly I see where you're going with this. <laughs> That's what I would do if I was his agent. Let's see here. Um, oh, thanks, David Crownson. That's a cute a little dancing uh, uh, controller you picked there. Do, 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 do. Marvelous Jack says, I think Zane Phillips or Pearson, I don't even know who either of those people are for Johnny Storm. But maybe... Ah, uh, David Crownson. Alan Richson is the thing. Everybody would want to see Alan Richson. They'd be like, we got to see him. Why is he just behind? That's so, that would make it all the more tragic. <laughs> There's beefcake under those rocks. Uh, I think maybe, <laughs> uh, there's lots of jokes that could be made about that, but let's keep it in good taste. Uh, let's see here. All right, any other questions about this? 
All right, let's move on to the Warner Brothers Discovery Call, uh, and then you can ask me anything that you would like. All right, hold on. So, all right. So, one second. So, we already kind of did the second story already. So, third, uh, third story of the day. Boom, baby. Let's talk about the Warner Brothers Discovery Earnings Call, which they had in the morning because it was, like, so bad. I was like, oh, is this today when I saw the report had been released this morning? I had thought this could be a major story for potentially. Because remember, Zazie was going around uh, telling everybody secrets on the last earnings call. He was going around announcing games that he wasn't supposed to. And he was like, woo! And everybody was like, oh, my God, turn his mic off. So anyway, uh, they had his call in the morning, uh, and it was not great. Uh, and there was one thing in it, you know, people were combing through it for headlines, and they found one. I guess I'll go with it first. And they found, you know, Bob Iger had kind of taken away all the hate from Zazie the past couple of weeks with his comments about r striking actors and writers weren't realistic. Well, Zazie apparently was like, no, I like being the, f you know, he, Zazie, Zazie wants to be the face of hate and corporate greed. So he said, by the way, while we had a tough time this quarter, Zazie pointed out that he was very happy that they saved $100 million thanks to the strike. <laughs> He's like, we didn't have to pay any of these writers and actors. So we saved 100 grand, I mean 100 million. And you're just like, what a horrible thing to say. Why would you say that? It was just, it was nuts. It's like, oh my goodness. It reminds me of like that Jennifer Aniston comment about Brad Pitt doesn't have a sensitivity chip. You know, you're just like, where, where is that? I mean, do these guys just talk off the cuff when they get on the phone? Like, where's, where's his, uh, where's his publicist? And says, "All right, Zazzy, you got to read this verbatim. Don't don't go off the don't go off the cuff." Uh, all right. So, what else was discussed? I also liked taking a picture of him on the Flash premiere red carpet, right? Because remember, they thought this was going to be a big hit. I mean, I liked the movie, uh, and I was I didn't know if it would be a big hit or not. Uh, but whoo! I nobody would ever get would have guessed it was the stinker that it was. Although some people had hoped it would be, but it was incredible. All right, so what else did they discuss today? Oh, Bloomberg says he was misquoted, Mika? Well, that's the internet for you, you know? I mean, I think the problem is that, you know, usually people would say, there's no way he said that. We better double and triple check it. But Zazzy has created such a horrible image that people are like, ah, oh, that totally sounds like a Zazzy thing to say. Let's go with it, you know? And nobody ever reads the apology. That's what's so tough about the space. Hey, Bay McCulloch, like, look how long it's taking for the Jonathan Majors case. That just got delayed by the prosecution. Jonathan Majors didn't want that delay. It got delayed till September. Marvel's like, are you freaking kidding me with this? Uh, and I feel, you know, I would love for everything to work out. I, I, want everyone, I want everything to be great, you know, just in general in life. Although I feel like guilty people don't go in, uh, innocent people don't really clutch a Bible going into court and with their brand new girlfriend, you know, and for him to change the type of woman he usually dates all of a sudden when it was like for optics, you know, it's just, it's not great optics. It just continues to be like, that's a lot of smoke, man. You know, I mean, also I think his, his lawyer is really sketchy, uh, but let's just see what happens. But you know, it's not, it's not great. I think that's the same. I was talking to somebody about the Kevin Spacey situation and we were like, why do you think that even though Kevin Spacey has been found innocent, nobody seems to believe it? And uh, we were talking about the fact that maybe it's because, you know, there was just Kevin Spacey was always so secretive. And like, I, it's just, it's weird. You know, I think public image is a big part of it. Although look at how Tom Hanks is plagued by weird rumors about him from the far right. You know, like people believe those really far rumors about Tom Hanks. And you're like, about Tom Hanks? And you would think Tom Hanks were like, was like squeaky clean. You would think nothing would stick to Tom Hanks, but yet these things have. So it's weird out there right now. Uh, all right, so anyway, back to Zazie. So uh, they talked about the fact that Barbie will be on Max in the fall. I believe it'll be the late fall. I saw somebody say that they, uh, the trades had found out that Barbie would be on airplanes in September. That's, very, that's a very interesting way to put it. Uh, you know, airplanes will get a movie before other venues, you know, it's available to watch on your flight. But I also had heard that Barbie was going to be dropping early fall, probably on digital. So, but that gives Barbie the whole month of August to play in theaters. So that's a very big window. 
all of July, all of August, and then for the fall, and I think we will do a watch along. I think we'll do a Barbie digital watch along. Uh, we're not gonna wait for it to get to Max. Uh, and I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. So, uh, and then Max is not only gonna get Barbie probably in the late fall, like maybe in October or something, but also uh, they'll soon be adding news and sports to the service, obviously through CNN. If they don't sell CNN, uh, maybe that'll be part of the test. Maybe they'll wait to see how uh, CNN content does on Max. And if it doesn't really move the needle, they'll, they'll sell that. Uh, Warner Brothers can start selling off parts in April. Uh, that's when they have the right, that's when they can legally do it based on uh, the way, you know, the government has set it up based on their acquisition. Oh, that's right, Josh. That's a good point. Sports from TNT. Thank you for that clarification. And Croc, thanks for gifting a membership. That's very, very kind of you. Uh, Gareth, did I thank you for gifting 10 memberships? If not, thank you. I just saw that. Uh, do I think that they'll sell Game of Thrones, Tiff? No, no, no. Selling divisions. Uh, you know, that's how they sell stuff. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery could sell divisions. Sell off parts, as Derek just said. And they, it, could they sell Batgirl? I, I don't think that, you know, they got the tax right off for that. That's the whole point. They'll, they'll never be seen. Um, and then they also said that they lost 1.8 million subscribers in the switch to Max. However, they felt that, oh, thank you, Ellie. Oh, what a nice thing to say. Uh, and they said, Alex, I'm not sure who they would sell CNN to. Um, they said Jeff Zucker might buy it back, but I was like, where's Jeff Zucker going to get the money for CNN? Would it become an independent news source? And who knows how much damage will be done to the brand by then? It's a very interesting situation. But anyway, Max was like, don't feel bad that we lost 1.8 million subs because a lot of people left HBO and uh, Discovery Plus to go to Max where everything is. So they just felt it was, and they're still, by the way, they're still giving a number for their subs, which I find very frustrating. So Warner Brothers Discovery says we have X number of subs, but it's the subs for HBO, Max, and Discovery Plus. And they won't, uh, thanks David, and they won't, break out who is under what. They won't say how many subs are for HBO, how many subs are for Max, and how many subs are for Discovery Plus. And I find that really upsetting, and I really am frustrated by the lack of transparency. I think it's very hard to gauge how the services are doing that way. So it's very annoying to me. Um, so, and I, by the way, Tiff, I would love if they sold Turner Classic Movies. It would make me so happy. And then they said the reason they weren't making a lot of money this, uh, this, uh, uh, this la well, Mika, I guess the D Disney bundle is kind of the same, but the Disney bundle is almost, I, I don't know, for some reason it seems less suspicious to me because I really want to know how Max is doing, I guess. Uh, then they said the reason that it didn't do very well, uh, the company this, this uh, quarter, was the Flash, significantly underperformed, a soft ad climate, which I thought was funny, uh, and maybe true. That means that not a lot of ads are being bought across the board. That's what a soft ad climate means. That means everybody's suffering. Um, and that's true to a degree. It's interesting when you see there's quarter, quarterlies. And for those of you who don't know, ads are bought everywhere, on everywhere they place ads. Ads are typically bought for a quarter. Uh, and also, uh, you'll see that uh, spending is very high at the beginning of the quarter, and it will really, you know, unless it's the holiday season, it tends to, uh, you know, kind of go off towards the end because people don't want, they've already spent their ad budgets. So it's very interesting to understand how ads work. You know, I've worked at some companies and I have to tell you like the advertising part of the company got all the attention, far more attention. I didn't work at the companies actually, like, you know, I was like um, kind of distributed by them, but it was interesting to see that they focused so much more on advertising than they even did on editorial. Like they editorial would just run itself. You know, they would be like, whatever, whatever, we don't care. Like they had laser focus on how ad sales were doing. And I always found that fascinating. I was like, don't you want to check in with the editorial team, you know? And they, they were like, nope, we just want to see how the ad sales are doing. And I thought that was really, really interesting. Uh, so, you know, that kind of gives you an idea of how uh, executives think and where their priorities are. You're like, but isn't the content driving the ad revenue and the, and the, the demand for ads on the content? They don't, they don't, I think they're just so worried about the ads that that's what it is. That's right, Navy EMT. That's the profits that drives the whole site. It pays for the whole operation. It's almost like stocks for companies. Companies that are uh, publicly owned care just about the stocks. Um, and, uh, you know, places that run ads care about the ad revenue. 
That's why the upfronts are so important, because they're pitching themselves to the advertisers. Does anybody have any questions about Warner Brothers Discovery? And then we will go to the Q&A, where you can ask me anything you would like about anything. Mika says, why are fast services taking off? Uh, or is that why? Yes, fast services are free ad-supported streaming services uh, where it's basically like cable, where you don't, have to you don't have to pay, but there's ads. And I think that they like that because they want the revenue. Michael says, Amazon does huge revenue with ads. I'm sure they do. Uh, yes, Tiff, Warner Brothers Discovery owns Cartoon Network, but I don't know how much, and that's Adult Swim in the evenings. So Basiso says, why did Warner Brothers Discovery put the Meg and Blue Beetle so close together? You know, it's funny you ask that, because when I was doing the movie math this past weekend and I was putting up those posters, I realized that they were all from the same studio and from Barbie. So it went Barbie, the Meg, and Blue Beetle, and I was like, that's so weird. Although the Meg 2, that's right, Ricardo, I did see the Meg 2's horrible Rotten Tomato score. And part of me is very sad that it didn't stay at 0%. That one critic messed it up. I guess maybe they didn't check to see what the other reviews were. But I'm like, if I were Warner Brothers, I would almost want it to be 0%. I mean, at least that would be interesting. And maybe people would feel they need to see it just to see how bad it is. Because you're like, 0%, not a single good review. And then someone ruined it. I was like, ah, oh, man, it would have been amazing. You know, I would rather it be zero than what, I think last I checked it was 7% or something, but that's what it was. But yeah, I had wondered, um, I didn't, I'm, I didn't, I'm not, I'm not planning on reviewing the Meg and I was going to see it. I told you with a friend of mine, she really wanted to see it. Although I did text her today and say, did you see that the Meg 2 is at 0% on Rotten Tomatoes? When I had texted her, it had not come in with another um, review yet. And she was like, maybe we shouldn't go. <laughs> Because, you know, it's one thing, to, a movie for it's not to be great, but it's another. Uh, my friend has, it's the same friend. She has a really good quote, which I always thought was great advice. And I've always, I bring this up all the time, and I think about it all the time. And she actually got it from her father. And it was, was it's one thing to get hit by a moving train, but it's quite another to go running towards it. And I think that's an amazing quote. And I think that that's very true. So it's one thing to get stuck seeing a bad movie that you didn't expect, but it's quite another for you to just intentionally go, oh, Kevin Plopper, I hope you have a good time. Don't worry about it. I hope you have fun. Uh, Steven, you liked the Meg too? Oh, that's great. Oh, that's a vote of confidence. That's good to hear. So, Kevin, you can feel a little better about that. So, it's hilarious. That's funny, Josh. The Meg too jumped the shark. That's what, the, uh, that's what they should do. You know, you know, you should work in advertising, Josh. If I were Warner Brothers Discovery, I would... I would um, I would bank on that and I would put that up immediately and be like, see the movie that jumps the shark and just have everybody go and see it. Uh, it's expected to outgross Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, by the way, which is a far superior film. I haven't even seen The Meg 2 and I know Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a superior film because it's, it's that good. It's incredible. So uh, it's just very funny. Kevin says, it's Statham fighting prehistoric sharks. How bad can it be? I mean, that's pretty funny. We'll see what the Rotten Tomato score ends like. Clearly, Warner Brothers did not go really and press for critics to see it. I mean, I didn't ask for a press screening, but they didn't offer one either. Oh, yeah, we are in the q and I didn't put it in. All right, so we'll do it officially from now. It's 518. You can ask me anything you'd like until 528. And then I must go. Mika says, do you think that Greta Gerwig signed the Narnia deal in case Barbie flopped? Can she get out of it now? You know, that's an interesting question. I bet she did sign it. I mean, I think she knew Barbie might be big, but I think she wanted to get her next gig. I always tell you, sign your deal before your movie opens, because especially if you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and I think that, I don't know if she can get out of it, but maybe she could delay it. I am disappointed she won't be getting right back, some, back into the box office arena, quite frankly. Steven says, I hope they don't announce a digital date yet for Barbie so people keep rewatching it in theaters. Do you think Barbie can pass Mario at the box office? I'm not sure, Steven, but I think the chances are very good. Very, very good. And then the Mario fans, I hope they're gracious about it. Kay Walton, I have reached out about Blue Beetle, and they told me to, you know, to hang tight. They said that they will let me know when the Blue Beetle screenings are, but uh, I do not have a date yet. Nico, I did see Hijack on Apple TV, and I love it. It's such an incredible, um, 
Such an incredible show. I highly recommend Hijack on Apple TV to everybody. Bochuli says, what do you like more, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Puss in Boots 2? Um, I think the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a bigger accomplishment and it's more unique, but from an entertainment perspective, Puss in Boots 2 is just more my style. And I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Loved it. But just for personal preference, I like Puss in Boots 2 a little bit better. Daniel, do I say, do I say water like a New Yorker? Uh, people, I, my family is from middle America. So that's why I'm like this weird amalgam of a New Yorker in middle America. Uh, Belle Trailer says, Grace, did you remember to wear sunscreen today? I didn't. I forgot, Belle. I forgot. Royal Morris says, hey, Grace, I've been watching you for at least five years. Hooray! Your business analysis content helped me prepare for and land my job at YouTube. Oh, wow! Where I am currently watching your stream. What? Royal, I am so happy. Uh, email, you know, DM me so I can talk to you some more. That's so cool. And I'm so happy I helped you get your dream job. That's fantastic. Well, I hope it's your dream job. But I'm really glad. I'm really glad that you were entertained by my videos, but also but also that they were helpful. That means a lot to me. And say hello to everybody else at YouTube there. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. You'll have to DM me because I was talking to somebody at YouTube uh, recently and they mentioned somebody who watched my show who was talking to them. So I wonder if it's you, Royal. Okay, what do you think here? Let's see. Bleezing says, I thought the Meg was universal. You know... Um, it might be, let's see, it might be one of the things where internationally it's some other way. So let me check. Uh, the worst movie I ever watched, uh, Leroy, was Hereditary. That's right! And I stand by it. Hold on. I don't want to miss people's questions. Mm -hmm. All right, so the Meg 2, let me look at its distribution. No, it's Warner Brothers. It's all Warner Brothers. Um, yep, Warner Brothers. Oh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Swamp Things, I think you'd make a great Sue Storm, but is there another superhero you'd love to play? Uh, you know, it's really fun and, you know, very flattering when anybody will, you know, recommend me or say that I would be who they would cast. Uh, that just, the fact that you thought of me means so much. Uh, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not an actor, so I, I, I like being uh, re reporting on this stuff. That's, that's my contribution. And, of course, it was really fun doing that Zombieland 2 cameo. I got to be a zombie. It was so fun. So I was really grateful that they asked me to do that. Uh, let's see here. Sean Turner says, Vanessa Kirby would be a good witch and Greta's Narnia. Well, she's busy doing, uh, she's busy doing um, Sue Storm now, though, so I want her to focus on that. The Chosen Girl Review says, finally got a gifted a membership. Long time viewer, love your content. I even got my husband into watching your reviews. Oh, that means a lot. I love your, uh, your, your avatar picture there. That's very nice. And say hi to your husband for me. Uh, I'm glad you guys can enjoy my videos together. Daniel Harati says, you sound very, oh, you're very New York and saying water. And then Jason Acker says, about Teenage Mutant Tur Ninja Turtles, is Splinter, Jason, are you trolling? Uh, Splinter is just teased in the new movie. Uh, stick around for that end credit sequence. Uh, but they do not give any details on Splinter. And I'm sure we would love... I trust the creative team behind this so much that whatever they want to do with Splinter, I support it. Gabe Green says, Do you think James Gunn's DCEU can be successful even with a soft reboot if he creates an overarching story like the MCU's Infinity Saga? I think it just has to be good. That's the most important. But, but I mean, he's making it so that he can't have any problems with the way he's doing it. So unless it's perfect, I think, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall apart because it already has cracks in it. Yeah, Jojo Bell, I don't have my water with me today, and I wish that I did a little bit, but I'll have it next time. Uh, Chris says, we used to champion the MCU for comics-accurate characters. Now we have female ro robot Taskmaster, Yellow Jacket Modoc, and Captain Marvel Scrolls. Yeah. I, I don't know. I told you, Kevin Feige used to be a movie god, and now he seems all too human. Uh, Max888 says, Hey, Grace, how would you feel about a live-action Barbie Mermaid Fairytopia movie? Now, I like the way it's done. Oh, Tiff, that's very flattering about the Harley Quinn cameo. I love that show. Love it. 
Uh, Sierra Dougie says Jesse Plemons is the thing. That's not a bad idea, although he's so skinny now. But he, he's a character actor. He might be able to do a very good job about that. Oh, oh yeah, Splinter's the dad. Oh, I see. I don't know my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles well enough. Uh, Splinter's not LGBT in the movie. Writer Boy says, what was the makeup process like in Zombieland? Okay, I'll tell you one quick little thing about it. Uh, that makeup was nuts, okay? Like, they put so much makeup on. It was so gooey and sticky. And then they put it in your hair, too. And so as soon as they yelled rap, like, they, we were done, because it was myself and, you know, the other guest stars, like Al Roker and Josh Horowitz, and, uh, but also a ton of extras. Uh, and also the stunt people. Like, I had a stunt person who uh, was my double. She was so nice. Uh, but as soon as they yelled cut, everybody ran for the makeup trailers to get all that stuff off of them so they could go home. And I was just like, I'll go last. Uh, it's like, it's fine. Uh, and it took so long to get it out of my hair. I think they had to wash my hair like twice, and it didn't come out still for weeks. It was, it was, it was crazy. But it was worth it. Every part of it was worth it. It was so fun. Twice as Bright says, who is your ultimate cast for Cyclops? I'm not sure. I just want him to be very much leading man material. And I'm glad that James Marston is going to get one more shot to do it right. Uh, Lisa, I'm glad you also hate Hereditary. Jason Acker says, do you think that Kevin Spacey should get another shot? I can't decide that. And thankfully, I don't have to. You know, I have to tell you, if I were a producer, I would not take the risk. Because I just haven't seen, I wouldn't even, I'd be too nervous even to take a risk on Johnny Depp. I just haven't seen, I haven't seen pop culture welcome them back in to a degree that I felt, you know, I, 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 again, it's too tricky and, you know, it's a decision that I don't have to make, so I'm not going to make it. Good day says, a lot of people were commenting about a Reed Richards Johnny poll on Twitter. Are you going to post one? Uh, do they want a poll? Oh, well, maybe I'll put it on regular Twitter. Terry says, what are Jason Momoa's chances of continuing on in the DC universe after the Gal Gadot news? I think he's going to be Lobo. You know, I think James Gunn, I don't know how James Gunn's going to explain it. I think he'd, I don't know. I would think he'd be a good Lobo, but at this point, I really feel that DC has continuing to have so many problems and so much drama, and I feel James Gunn hasn't squashed any of the drama. Instead, he's creating his own drama. And I just really wish they would take a break for a couple of years and come back. And I still think they should have built off Matt Reeves as the Batman. It's like, so, it's as obvious as Vanessa Kirby and Austin Butler being who you should cast in Fantastic Four. I mean, I think it's so weird for us to sit here and look at choices in Hollywood and be like, it's so clearly what you should do and for them not to do it. It's maddening. Miguel says, instead of Comcast buying Warner Brothers, do you think maybe Apple or Amazon might have interest in it? I'd rather Warner Brothers be sold to a non-studio company. I don't know. Um, I really want Comcast to use them in their theme parks, though. And I would like Comcast to take over DC. I don't know if Apple, I think, I worry that Apple or Amazon would make many of the same mistakes. You know? Al Watch, thank you for gifting a membership. Lawless Bro, welcome. Let's see here. Kareem says, hi, Grace. How would you feel about Rainbow Bright being the next big movie after Barbie? I don't know about Rainbow Bright because she's a child. And so I'm not sure how that would work. She'd have to, I think, really be remodeled. I don't really know about Rainbow Bright, to be honest with you. I'm, and I don't know the, I'm not familiar with the story that well. I've just seen the character. Uh, I think, you know, it's like strawberry shortcake. You know, like, you know it's popular, but what are you going to do with that? Uh, Ahmad says, yay, thank you. But although, what, were, what would you do with Barbie? Um, you know, I saw a very snarky writer make jokes about, um, you know, the pitch room. And that, you know, it was soul-sucking to be a, an aspiring writer and get presented with um, these options for what the studio was looking for. And uh, this writer made a joke saying that he had said maybe he would do, okay, the Pez movie. But they said, no, sorry, Pez is already taken. Somebody's already working on that. And he was like, it was soul crushing and my soul died and Hollywood is so horrible. And it's like, you can, so I just want to point out to anybody who's in the industry or trying to get into the industry, that is the wrong mentality. Because that, don't say no. You're saying no to yourself. You're saying no to opportunity. You have to say yes. 
So instead of saying, oh my God, this list is so stupid, you got to go, I'm so glad that they asked me to look at the list. You know, how many writers would kill for a Hollywood studio to put a list in front of them and say, do you think you could pitch any of this to me? Uh, And then also, look what Greta Gerwig did. She wasn't like, oh, I don't want to make a Barbie movie. She was like, how can I make a Barbie movie that will deliver for the studio and the brand, but be something that can help my career as well? And she did it, which is one of the things, and you would think that was impossible. And the fact that she did it is what makes it so such an extraordinary film and why so many people, particularly people who are creatives, are shocked by it. Because they're like, who would think you could make a Barbie movie that you could be proud of and still hold on to your artistic credibility? and dignity. And she did. And so I think everybody should learn from that, hopefully. That's why every time anybody makes fun of the Barbie movie, I find it very sad. Ethan says, hi, Grace. I just had an interview at Lionsgate yesterday. Oh, wow. And I'm worried I did horrible. But watching your live streams today and yesterday has helped me de-stress. Well, Ethan, first off, the fact that you even got into the room is very exciting. And you know, you're probably going to have, maybe you'll get this job. All right but you're probably gonna have a couple of interviews and that's great, you know, you know, again, it's just like an audition. Don't fall in love with the job, fall in love with the business and get excited about being in it and you'll find the place that's right for you. So break a leg, uh, make sure you keep in touch with the person who did the interview because you know, you never, maybe if you're not right for the job this time, maybe there's another one down the line or something and um, you know, just do whatever you did to get that interview to hopefully get something somewhere else. And don't stress about it. You know, I stress, I was stressing about something earlier today that was business related, in fact, and I had to have someone talk me down. Uh, so you never know, and it's just not worth it about being stressed, especially if you already did it. I mean, because there's nothing you can do. Isaac says, I saw Oppenheimer and the explosion was underwhelming, like you said. Thank you. The movie felt longer than three hours, but I enjoyed it. I'm just glad you were still able to enjoy it, but thank you for uh, validating my explosion comment. I appreciate it. Sean Turner said, I would love Anna Shalotra. She's from The Witcher, right? As a rebooted Wonder Woman. You know, I think she's a great actress and I'd love for her to get more opportunity. David Kyle says, John Krasinski really messed Emily Blunt up for the role of Sue. Uh, No, I don't think she would be a good Sue Storm. I think she's also, I want someone a little bit fresher, you know? I don't want these things to seem like SNL sketches. When I think you cast actors that are too far established elsewhere, that's what starts to happen. Al watches are you reading any comics right now? New X-Men, Iceman came out, might pick it up. Uh, if, you, if you follow me on, uh, if, you're, if you subscribe to me on Twitter, I post, well, I haven't lately because my stack has been so small. But yeah, I'm still reading comics, but comics are in pretty bad shape right now, I got to tell you. Uh, let's see here. Scanjet, thanks for your first super chat. I have not seen Hearts, Heartstopper Season 2 yet, but I, I hope people are watching it. I was disappointed that it wasn't trending today when it started. Is that your real address? I hope not. 5108 Seneca Way. All right, I think I'm pretty caught up here. Alex, I agree. Glenn Powell for Johnny Storm, but his agent apparently isn't getting him in the room. David Kyle really wants Emily Blunt for Sue Storm. Ah, Kareem, I like you calling my, uh, my attitude of pragmatic positivity. That's a really nice way to describe it. Yeah, you don't want to be, you want to be positive, but not so positive that you're unrealistic. You always got to keep it real. And I think another thing that, oh, thanks, Junior Jangles. Another thing that people don't realize is just because you're, you're in a bad situation or something isn't good, that isn't, um, that isn't a commentary on you. Like, don't take things personally. That took me a long time to learn, too. And you also have to learn that not everybody thinks the same. In fact, most people think quite differently. So you can't apply apply the way you think to the way someone else thinks. Um, And hopefully they won't do the same to you. Because often I'll be interacting with somebody personally or professionally or just in life, and I just can't comprehend their life choices. But something that really helped me was understanding that not everybody thinks the same and not everybody acts the same. And so you have to just kind of be at peace with that. Anthony says, Warner Brothers IP is all over Six Flags. That's true. But I don't think that Six Flags is a good enough theme park, to be honest with you. That's right, Uncle Baby Billy. Welcome back. Yes, Invisible Woman is going to be the lead of Fantastic Four. Other people have reported that first, but I did confirm it with my own sources today, so I believe that rumor is true. Steven Turner says, DC is, reminds me of what Fox X-Men tried to do, a soft reboot instead of a full reboot, and got so convoluted. That's a good comparison, Steven. Let's 
see. All right. I'll watch. I did check out the Superman anime, and I thought, you know, my adventures with Superman on Max is a little too kitty for me, but I thought it was cute. David Kyle says, if Joseph Quinn gets Johnny Storm, I'm horrified for the X-Men casting. I'm a little nervous, Drew, too. Oh, uh, bye, Sonny. You have a great evening, too. Why are your fingers burning, Angela? That's right, Aaliyah. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. As MJ says, uh, and as I've said before, uh, I'd rather be pleasantly surprised than bitterly disappointed. And I've been bitterly disappointed. Even though that's my saying, I still end up bitterly disappointed sometimes. Zay, not a lot of videos coming out this week because it's just so freaking slow. It is so slow this week, um, but that's why I'm really focusing on the streams. Uh, but of course, Movie Math will come out on Sunday. But, you know, it's just real slow. Are there any shows or movies coming out the rest of the month? It's like nothing. I mean, I'll be reviewing some of the movies that are coming out, like Gran Turismo, um, hopefully The Last of the Demeter, The Last Voyage of the Demeter, Blue Beetle, obviously, I'll do coverage on Blue Beetle. Oh, yeah, I'm over. Um, but, you know, that, like that, that's what I'm going to be doing. August is a light month. Light, 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 light. All right, let's do shout outs. Let's do shout outs. Um, Zay, I just answered your question. All right, shout out time. Shout out time. All right, so what's everybody up to? Just so I can say hi to you. Where are you? What are you doing? Sierra, I'm not watching Full Circle on Max, but my parents tried it and they did not care for it. David is waiting to get out of the office to go watch Ninja Turtles. I guess the Meg will have to wait for another day. Oh, David, you're going to have such a good time with the turtles. I love your little emojis. They're so cute. Leroy is marinating steak and teriyaki sauce for dinner. Ooh, I like it. Well, Ben 10 is enjoying the live stream in, my, in his bedroom in France. Ooh la la. My deuce is you're reviewing Talk To Me. I have not seen it, and I'm probably not reviewing it. Although Steven loved Full Circle, so, you know, maybe give it a whirl. Tiff is in bed with their cat Puddles, waiting to go on a bike ride. Your cat's name is Puddles. I hope it's not for bad reasons. Um, a, a, little, a little place of wonder says, Grace, did you watch Good Omens Season 2? I did. I did watch Good Omens Season 2. And I wonder if it came out too close to Heartstopper Season 2. I wonder if that'll, be, if that'll benefit both shows or hurt Heartstopper because they're so close. But I thought Good Omens was really charming. I really enjoyed it. I watched it all the way through, although I didn't think it was as good as the first season. Mike Drop says, I opened my decor showroom in Las Vegas. For the opening party, we had our baby shower. Wow, my wife's name is Elsa, and she chose Anna for our baby girl. Oh, I love it. What great theming. And good luck, you know, break a leg with your business venture. Senior Lullaby is playing Borderlands 3 with cousins and watching the live stream. Hello, cousins. Sion is booking a hotel in London for December to see the Stranger Things live show. Oh, that sounds awesome. Is that, I don't know what that is. I saw a live kind of like experience, which was incredible. So if that's the same thing, I hope you have a good time. Uh, Ibrahim is getting ready to go to sleep. Alex is in London watching Heartstopper season two. I hope you're enjoying it. Enrique is watching the live stream while working at home in Monterey, Mexico. While wandering, Seth is in Germany going to sleep doing a hike through the Black Forest. Well, obviously not right now, but uh, that's cool. Oh, Tiff says, Puddles also loves my videos. Aw, and his name is not for something bad. All right, uh, meow, meow, Puddles. And Paro says, almost done at work, ready for his three-day, uh, ready for her three-day uh, three weekend. That's pretty great, Amparo. Three-day weekend's pretty sweet. Look at Navy, Navy EMT is going to Epcot for dinner. Uh, dinner in the German Pavilion. Ooh, I'd actually... I'm not a fan of the German food at the Pavilion in Epcot, but I hope you have a good time. Are you seeing the, are you seeing the, sh the show? I saw that show. It was pretty great. Once I was at Epcot, and, you know, they have people from the countries working at the pavilions. And it was so funny because everybody was online, and they had a line for food and a line for drinks. And someone was on the wrong line. And I remember that when he got up to the front, the German person working there laughed at him and said, you're on the wrong line. You have to go and stand at the end of that other line. It's so long. And it was hilarious because it was such a German thing to do. And that guy couldn't believe it. He was like, but I waited so long already. And the guy was like, I'll see you in a little bit. 
I was like, oh, I really feel like I'm getting the German experience. Brian says, taking my boyfriend and his nieces to see Barbie. They prefer it over turtles. You'll have a great time. Barbie's such a good movie. Mr. Sweet Tooth is in bed, turned in, uh, tuned in late, watching from Kenya, Africa. Oh, I love it, Mr. Sweet Tooth. Hi to you in Africa. That's a funny joke, Gerard, although no offense to our German friends. Uh, Jacob Herrera says, in Los Angeles, getting ready for Taylor Swift tonight. Oh, I wonder if you guys will cause another earthquake. Jake says, can you say hi to my coworker, Sarab? He is a new fan of BTT. Well, I hope I pronounced his name correctly, but welcome to the party, Sarab. Let's see here. Rashad is eating scorching sesame shrimp noodles and enjoying the stream on the day off. That sounds delicious, uh, Rashad. Uh, Ivan says, Grace, you're the best. I'm just leaving work and my boyfriend and I are seeing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles tonight. We're excited. Greetings from Chicago. Oh, have a great time. Jeff says, uh, from Oakland, going to finish up Witcher Season 3 tonight with the wife. Uh, enjoy. I'm glad you're enjoying that show. And then Gritter Play says, hi, Grace. I think that Gaia was given Captain Marvel's powers so that Rogue can steal them from Gaia and not Captain Marvel. But then wouldn't Rogue be overpowered? I'm not a fan of that. Uh, but I'm glad you're watching Star Wars Rebels. It's so good, right? And then Vutuli says, watching from the Czech Republic and cooling myself off with cookies and cream ice cream even though current summer temperatures are relatively low. Yeah, it cooled off here in New York as well. Uh, and then Ricardo says, love from Edinburgh, Grace. Oh, love to you too. Ah, oh, wait, I'm glad you enjoyed my German story. And Sam Yeager says, getting ready for my senior year in high school to start next week. Oh, already? Boy, some school sure starts early. I can't believe your school is going to start in the middle of August. That's crazy. But senior year, very exciting. All right, everybody, I had a fantastic time with you, as always. Thank you so much for joining the live stream. Uh, three live streams this week. We did it. And we will certainly be doing live streams next week as well. In fact, live streams are really going to keep us going this month because it is slow. Uh, but we, we managed to have, like, three really juicy live streams this week. So I'm, I'm quite proud of it. And I had, as always, a great time with all of you. All right, see you soon and see you online. Bye, everybody. Toodles. Bye-bye.